Welcome to creating a node-based editor in Unity, lesson 12. So what we're going to do in this lesson is actually get our nodes uh, created from our context menu. So if I launch the, the node editor here, I want to basically, if I have a graph loaded, so if I load a graph here, so if I say my graph, I want to actually have another set of menu options down here that allows me to create some new nodes. All right, so we need to do that first, just to give ourselves a, a way to start the process of node creation. All right, so I'm going to jump back over here into Mono Develop, and inside of the uh, work view, uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to add a couple more menu options. So I'm going to create a new separator. So menu dot add separator, and um, we're going to create two new menu options. So we're going to say menu. Uh, dot add item and we're going to say uh, new GUI content. We're going to give it a label of add float. All right, and we'll just keep going with all this stuff. So context callback like that. And we'll send in three as the ID for this one. So then we can just uh, copy this, paste that down, and we'll say add. Or actually, let's change these to uh, float node. How about that? Like so. And we'll say uh, add node. All right. And we'll send in an ID of four for the add node. All right. So then we just need to populate uh, this stuff right here. All right. So we'll say three. <clears throat> and then four. Like so. There we go. And what we need to do is create a new a static method that allows us to create nodes. All right. So uh, what I'm going to do is go over to my node utils. And uh, we'll get rid of this view base here. And uh, what I want to do is um, create a new static method that will create a node for us. How about that? So let's go in and um, start that. So we'll say public uh, static void. And we're going to say create node. All right. So. For our arguments, uh, we need the graph, right? Well, we need the current loaded graph. Uh, and so what we can do is we can actually pass it in because uh, we only have these options available to us if we have a, a graph loaded. So we know that curry graph is not null at this point, so we can send that in, all right? So for our first argument, I'm going to send in a GT node graph called curry graph. And then we want a, a node type, all right? So um, this allows us to differentiate uh, between different types of nodes. So in, in our scripts over here, we have our GT node in them. So our first entry into this, let's actually just get rid of all this stuff here. And I'm going to create a new public enum called node type. And this is going to be responsible for just giving our nodes some sort of um, uh, way of easily identifying them without actually having to check their class type. All right, so or object type. So what I'm going to do is uh, create a float type. I'm going to create an add type. And you can keep going on and on and on. But for now, this will work out just fine for us. All right. All right, so we're going to say node type and just give it that same name. And then we also want to get the mouse position because we want the node to be created wherever we right click. So we want that mouse position. right? So we want to store that mouse position and create the node at that position. All right, so we're going to send in a vector 2, and it's going to be called mouse pause. And there we go. All right, so that will complete all of our arguments for that particular, um, this particular function. So what we want to do is uh, we should always check just to make sure that in transit the graph didn't become null at any certain point. So just good practice to make sure that you're, you're checking that stuff. Because without that curve graph, we can't actually uh, store the node um, in our data structures. All right. And so what we want to do now is we want to say gt uh, node base, all right, cur node. So we just want to create a local variable and store um, some node that we create down uh, in the later part of this particular method here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch on that node type. I'm going to say node type. And what we can do then at that point is create uh, our different node types. But since we haven't actually created those, I'm just going to tempt this in and put in the default case and do a break. 
so I can stub in the rest of this stuff. All right. So then we'll come down here and we'll say if uh, cur node does not equal null, then we're going to continue the creation of the null the node and actually add it to the asset database and the cur graph itself. All right. So let's actually go and get our nodes set up. So uh, what I want to do is jump back into Unity over here, and inside of my nodes folder, uh, what I'm going to do is add two more scripts. So I'm going to say gt add node, and we'll do gt uh, float node. So these are going to be the two nodes that we work with in this particular course, so float node. All right, so let's launch these guys. And we're just going to start with the float node just for now. All right. All right. So. Uh, what we want to do is we want to get this uh, script all set up so that we are uh, ready to create it. So we're going to say if uh, unity editor because this particular object uh, will be working in the editor and in the runtime. So we want to make sure that we don't include any um, editor code when we actually compile this application. And we also want to use the system because we're going to serialize this. And uh, that's about it. So then we want to do the serializable. Tell Unity that it is going to be saved to disk. All right, so then um, I also want to make sure that this extends the node base, all right, because this is going to be the parent class for this particular node. And that way we can do a bunch of shared logic for all nodes that extend this particular class. All right. All right, so let's stub in our um, our region, so variables, like so, and we'll do our main methods, all right, and we'll do our utility methods and region, just like that, perfect, all right, and so uh, really because we've extended a lot of information from uh, the node base, uh, really, because it's a float, all we need to do is store a public float value so we can actually enter in some sort of float. So I'm going to say public float um, uh, node value, like that. Perfect. And then we, what we want to do is we want to override the, um, the init method. So we're going to say public override. We're going to do a, an init. All right. So when this particular node gets created, I am going to um, set the node type to equal node type dot float. All right. And I'm also going to set up the rectangle so that we can have custom rectangles uh, per type of node. So I'm going to say node rect is equal to a new rect of, um, I don't know, let's do something like, uh, we'll initialize it to 10, 10 f and we'll do something like uh, 150 by 65. All right. And really, that just allows me to have different size nodes. So it's, again, another just visual thing for users to um, uh, identify nodes quickly without having to uh, do a lot of reading or <clears throat> who knows. All right. So public override, we're going to actually override the um, update method. So we're going to say update node. We definitely want to do that. And then we also want to update the um, Unity stuff. So Unity editor and if. And we'll put that out here. And then we'll override that. So public override void. Oops, sorry. Update node GUI. There we go. Perfect. So that gets that all set up for us. Sounds perfect. And then uh, basically that is everything we want to do right there for that node. So now we actually can go and create this node and um, we'll, we can fill in all these um, updates uh, later on. All right, but uh, what we want to do is in the node, we actually just want to go and be able to create the nodes first and then we'll worry about drawing them uh, to the work view uh, in just a bit. All right, so now that that is all set up, we can come back to our node utility script and finish off our switch over here. So we can say case node type float. All right, so uh, all we need to do is actually create a new instance of this, a new scriptable object instance. So we're going to say that cur node is equal to scriptable object dot create instance, and it's going to be of type gt uh, float node. All right, 
and we're going to store it in this curve node that we uh, created up here, this local variable right up here. So I'm going to say gt uh, float node. Perfect. And then break after that. All right. Now I'm just going to indent that over there. All right. So once we get down to this portion, um, we're going to basically initialize that node. So we're going to say curve node dot init node, like so. So we set up all of its basic information. So we're going to run this first. And then basically, I want to set the uh, cur node dot uh, node rect dot x to mouse pause dot x, right? So that way it shows up where the mouse was, where we right clicked. Cur node dot node rect dot y is equal to mouse pause dot y. All right. And then we also want to um, set the, the parent graph. Um, of this particular node. So you'll notice in the node base, we have a parent graph here. So I want to make sure that uh, the nodes all know about which graph they really belong to without having to do a lot of searching um, in, the, in, the, in the code. So we, we can store that. So I'm going to say cur node dot um, parent graph is equal to cur graph, right? Because we're passing it into this particular create node method. And then finally, um, I want to send in, so cur graph uh, dot add, whoops, sorry, dot nodes, dot add, and we're going to add uh, this node. So we're going to add the current node, like so. So with that, we basically um, have created the node, and we've added it to the list. Now we just need to make sure that we add it to the asset. So we need to make sure that it actually gets included inside of this asset here. So we can start to pack in sub-objects into these particular assets over here. All right. <clears throat> Perfect. So let's go and do that. It's actually not that hard. So we'll say asset database dot add object to asset. All right, so we're going to say cur node. We're going to add that node to the cur graph. And that will add it as a sub object to the current uh, cur graph asset. All right, so asset database. We'll do another save assets. And we'll do another asset database dot refresh just so we can see it as it's created. All right, so that's perfect. The last thing I, I want to do um, in the node base is I also want to make sure that we set these guys to, to dirty. So I'm going to say editor utility.setDirty. Now we're just going to set it to this. So with that, we should actually be able to create nodes now. We just need to come over to our work view here. And instead of calling, so yeah, there's the foot one. So instead of calling um, the uh, unload graph, we're going to call GT node utils dot uh, create node and we're going to fill in all this information so i'm going to send in that cur graph i'm going to send in the node type which is float and we're going to get the uh, current event mouse position so we actually need to store that somewhere so inside of our uh, view we could make this a global thing. Uh, for now, I'm just going to keep it inside of the work view. So I'm just going to make a protected, well, we'll just make it private. So we'll say vector2, mouse position, mouse pause. How about that? So then when we process our events, uh, basically, I can always get the mouse position. So right here, I'm going to say mouse pause is equal to e dot mouse position. All right. Or actually, we can also set it when we actually right click. We'll do that instead. Because that's really only the only place where we're actually going to need it, for now at least. All right, so then I can send in mouse pause. Mouse pause, like so. And I don't need that. There we go. Perfect. All right, so that should be everything that we need. All right, so let's go and see if we have any errors. And we do, so let's go and take care of those. So let's see what it says. All right, so we just need to fix up some syntax. <clears throat> oh, I see. We just need to set node type, not the actual class. So node type, there we go. For some reason, it is not getting a node type, and that's probably because I didn't include that in the node base. So I'm going to say node type, node type. There we go. 
So now the child class will actually get that. So let's see if that helped it along. And we also have, oh, we also need to make that public. Go. There we go. All right, so now that we've got all that hooked up and all the errors taken care of, uh, let's go and let's take a look at our, at our database. And because I have the curve graph loaded, let's test out um, adding a node. So I'm gonna hit uh, float node. And there we go. You'll notice that we added a new sub object to our graph. So if I were to click on the graph, you'll notice that we actually have um, some nodes in our um, nodes list here, and we have a float node. And that float node is also an asset as well. And it's being serialized as well. All right. So what we've done is we've, we've created a new node, and we can keep creating new nodes in here, and we've set the node rect and everything. We did not set the, the node name, though. So <clears throat> I can actually just set that here. We'll just call that float node. And everything should actually stick if we hit play. There we go. We didn't lose any data. Didn't lose any data. And there we go. We didn't lose any data. Everything is serialized and good to go. And the graph is holding all of those node or that node um, in its memory. So that way we can call it up later. So great. In the next lesson, we're going to go over how to draw the nodes. Um, so we have some sort of graphical representation. Thanks so much. <laughs>
and the name is we'll just do the node name for now and we don't have any GUI style so we'll just leave that empty for now we'll set that up here in just a second all right so I'll hit save go back in the unity here and uh, we, we got an error there so let's actually take a look and see what we got so update node GUI needs a couple things so if we go into float node we need to pass in that event as well so we have e and we also have urect all right so that should do it just fine let's go back in here and there you go now we have a float node where we created it so if i created another float node there we go and we're not actually initializing the um the node name so we should probably take care of that <clears throat> so if i go into my utils so here we can actually set the name so I because I know it's a float at this point. So I say per node dot node name is equal to uh, float node. There we go. All right. So you can always edit these particular um, uh, pieces of data. If you go into their um, representations in the database, so I can add in float node. But it's always a good idea to set them up. So if I were to create a new float node now, it actually has that new name because we initialized it. All right, so now we have three nodes drawing in our graph. Um, the next couple things that we need to do is we need to make sure, or we need to make, give the uh, user the ability to actually move these around in the work view. All right. So what we can do uh, first is come down into our node base because we'll have the node base just manage the actual moving of the whole node. All right. Um, <clears throat> instead of the nodes itself, because that's something that's going to be constant throughout all nodes, so we can put that in our base class. So first I want to check um, if uh, the view rect um, dot contains our mouse position. So we're going to say e dot mouse position, like so. All right, perfect. All right, so then at this point, if it does actually contain it, uh, we also need to make sure that we are uh, pressing down here. So we're going to say if e dot type is equal to, um, oh, sorry, event type dot mouse down, or actually it's mouse drag. We'll take care of some of the nuances here in just a little bit. All right, so if we um, are dragging the mouse and the um, Mouse is over the current, uh, the uh, current uh, view rect. Then we have to have to make sure that we're actually inside of this particular node's uh, node rectangle. So we have to do one more check. We say if uh, node rect dot contains because this is the the current rectangle for this particular instance of this node. All right, e dot mouse position. Then we can actually update it. So what we want to do is um, we want to just update it using the delta from the event. And th thankfully, Unity has provided that for us. So we're going to say node rect dot x plus equals e dot delta dot x. And the same for the y. So node rect dot y plus equals e dot delta dot y. All right, so we're first checking to make sure that we're dragging. Then we're going to check to see if, actually, we could do that after the fact. How about we do that? Let's move that around there. Perfect. And then we'll move these guys back, like so. Great. So let's check to see if that actually works. It should. So now if I'm over a node, right, I can actually move it around in, my, in the space. But you notice if I move really fast, I actually lose it. And that's what we're going to get into uh, in the next lesson about node management and just making sure that uh, when you actually select a node, you can drag it and just managing what is selected and what isn't selected. But at least um, from the start, we have nodes being created and we can move them around in our editor view and they sit inside of the, the graph or the work view and not the property view. All right. So perfect. Everything is good to go. And they move around with the window itself. That's perfect. And we're uh, checking to make sure that we're actually over a node to move it. 
So the last thing that we want to do in this lesson is actually give these guys a little bit of a, a gooey skin. All right. So for this, what I want to do is I actually want to um, go to my editor skin here. All right. And I want to create two more custom styles. So I'm going to create two more styles. All right. Sorry. Let me make three. There we go. So this first style is going to be uh, node uh, default. This is going to be for nodes that aren't selected. All right. And then the second one is going to be node selected. All right, so when the node is selected, it'll use this particular um, uh, GUI style. All right, so let's just start with the default and get that working. All right, uh, I'm going to go back into Photoshop here, and let's actually create a new um, 64 by 64 image. And this basically is going to be the graphic that we use for our node. So uh, I'm actually going to create a new rounded rectangle, and that way it just has kind of a pleasant look to it. That's some nice rounded rounded corners to it. And we'll give it a little bit of a border. All right, so I'm going to give it a radius of 3 for the roundedness of those corners. There we go. And I want to make these guys a little bit lighter. <coughs> so let's go a little bit lighter here. And we will actually add <coughs> a border to it. And we will change the size of that border to something that's Let's do uh, one, one pixel. There we go. That's perfect. All right. So that is good for that. And what we're going to need to do is create the textures for the, um, the normal state, the hover state, and the active state. So I'm going to delete these guys. This is really easy to do. Um, we can just duplicate this here. And we can, let me hide this. What I can do is I can, uh, oops, sorry, I can go and flatten this here, over here, and we, we will just make it a little bit lighter, so that'll be like, the, that'll be the hover state, and then I'll just, I'll just set the, um, no, the active state to the normal state, all right, so hopefully that makes sense, so I'm going to hide this for now, and Let's do that one. I'm going to collapse it. And what I'm going to do is create a node default normal. All right, so this is the normal state for this particular node. And then I'm going to do the hover state. So we'll do that. And we'll do node default hover. Perfect. All right, so let's go back into Unity over here and make sure that our textures are set to the right texture type. So I'll say that and put it at 64 and true color. All right. So now what we need to do is actually get the, the editor skin set up. So let's set that up really quickly. It doesn't really take that long. All right, so um, I'm going to put in the normal hover. And then for the hover texture, I'm going to do the hover texture there. And then for the active, I'm going to set it to the normal. Perfect. And I want these colors to be relatively similar. This one's going to go white. And then we can just use the same color as normal for the active, for the font color. All right, so let's, see, let's take a look and see what that looks like. Um, <coughs> and the border should be fine, 6 by 6. That's good. So let's go back to our code. And uh, what we can do in the nodes themselves. So if I actually go to the node where we're here, what we can actually do in our update node is pass in a, uh, the GUI skin because we're already getting it in our view. And this is where I'm updating the, uh, the node. So I'm going to actually pass in that GUI skin so I don't have to look for it again. So we'll say uh, view skin. All right. So that's good. So that's on the node base, and then on the float node, when we update our node GUI, we're going to do a GUI skin dot, oops, view skin. I think that's what I called it, and a view skin. Perfect. And we've added to that base function call right there. All right, so now we can actually use it. So what I want to do is uh, I want to go view uh, skin dot get style. And our style name was no default, if you remember, default. All right, so with that, everything should be working. 
So let's go check it out. Oh, and we got an error, so let's go take a look and see what it is. All right, so we're just missing one function here. Oh, and then that is in the node graph. Oh, in the graph, yeah. And I actually don't want the, um, like if I'm doing that, oh no, yeah, no, that is right. So I wanna, I wanna pass in that view skin, which means then that the uh, graph needs the view skin. So we'll send in the GUI skin, view skin, like that. And we will pass in the uh, view skin right here. There we go, it's node graph. So I forgot a level. There we go. And bam, just like that, we now have nodes that are uh, styled with our own custom GUI and ready to go. So at this point, we can actually play around with some of the font sizes in real time, like so. And we can change the padding on these guys. You know, something more like that. So you can do a lot of things. So that's the general idea behind doing that. So then what we're going to do when we get into node management, uh, we're going to go over um, swapping out to a different style so that when I select a node, it has uh, some different coloring, maybe some different uh, GUI textures for it, just to indicate that it is, in fact, selected. But at that point right now, we actually are pretty close to being done uh, with our node editor. All we really need to do is uh, take care of the node management and um, learning how to connect nodes with lines. All right. Thanks so much. Welcome to creating a node-based editor in Unity, lesson 14. So in this lesson, we are going to go through the process of uh, managing our nodes. Um, I'm sure that you've been playing around with your node editor. And so basically, you'll notice that if I were to push or try to drag this node underneath this other node, I'm going to start dragging the other node as well. And that's because we need a concept of a selected node. That way, we can isolate out the node that we currently have selected and move just that and nothing else. Currently. We're just saying if any node, or if the mouse, mouse is over any node, it's going to start moving it. All right, so we need to start to create a little bit more of a management system to make sure that we know which node is actually selected. And we can also actually deselect all nodes. So let's get that underway. <clears throat> so I'm going to go uh, to the actual node graph script over here. All right. And uh, I'm going to get rid of all these other scripts except for that. So. Yeah, we'll keep these guys since this is what we're working with right now. All right, so the first thing that we need to do in the node base uh, script, I need to add a new public bool that says is selected. All right, and we'll set it to false um, by default. So we'll initialize it to false. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in and we're going to actually process the uh, node management inside of our graph, OK? So what we have down here. We're processing events in our graph, and this is a good place to actually manage all the nodes because it's at the higher level. So the graph can actually manage all of its nodes that, it, that are, are contained inside of its node list over here instead of trying to have each node uh, try to manage uh, all the other nodes around it, right? So because the node graph script can see all nodes in this list, um, it's a good place to actually process this node management um, logic, OK? So what we want to do is we actually want to um, uh, detect um, which node we just clicked on, right? And set its value to is selected. So set it to true. And basically, if a node is set to true then and we're dragging, then we can actually drag it around and we won't be pushing around all the other nodes, all right? So we want to make sure that we actually manage that. All right, so uh, back in our script over here, what we can do. Uh, I'm going to first uh, detect which button we have pressed. So I'm going to say e uh, dot button is equal to zero for the left click. All right. And then I'm going to say if e dot type is equal to event type dot mouse down, that means we just clicked down. 
we want to run a bunch of logic in here. So the first thing we want to do is we want to deselect all the nodes. All right, so we're going to need another method for that. So I'm going to create a new method in here called deselect uh, all nodes, like so. All righty, and inside of here, so I'm going to make sure that we do that first. Let's go here. So we're going to deselect all the nodes, and then we're going to start checking to see which um, node we are actually over when we click down. All right, so um, inside of our deselect all nodes, it's pretty simple. We're just going to do a for loop. We're going to say int i equals zero, and i is less than nodes dot count. All right, say i plus plus. So we're going to loop through each of those nodes and just set its is selected flag to false. So initially, when we first press down, we're going to deselect every node and then check to see which node we are actually over and set it back to um, true. So let's do that. All righty. So we're going to say nodes i dot is selected equals false. Easy. All right. So then the next step in this process, all right, is to um, basically um, loop through all the nodes, right, and see if the current node, um, or see if the current mouse position is over a node. So what we're going to do is we're going to loop through. So uh, a good thing to do at this point is just to make sure, uh, let me see here, where I process my events here. Oh, I'm already checking. So I just wanted to make sure that I'm already checking if nodes.count is greater than zero. Then I'm processing my events, so I don't have to do that down here. So I already know that we have more than one, so I can just say for int i equals zero, i is less than nodes.count, and then i plus plus. Perfect. All right. So we just want to check to see if the current mouse position is actually inside of a node. So we're going to say if uh, nodes i dot node rect, all right, dot contains e dot mouse position, <clears throat> all right, then we are over that particular node. So I'm just going to do a debug log for now. All right, so we'll say, uh, ins or over node. All right, so let's go check out that logic code. All right, we'll bring up the console. So if I click outside of a node, but if I do click on a node, I am now over a node. But perfect. So that actually brings up a, another interesting um, element that we can set up already. So basically, if I am not over any sort of node, then we will de deselect. So what I want to do is actually create a flag um, that um, every single time we actually process a mouse down event, um, it checks to see if we are over a node or not. So I need some sort of um, a flag or Boolean value outside of this for loop. So we're going to say set node equals false. So what happens is if we are over a node, we're going to set this to true. All right. All right. So that way we know that we've actually, um, oh, sorry, equals true. So that way we actually know that we actually hit a, a node. So then after the for loop, we can say if uh, not set node, then let's just deselect everything. Because that means we clicked outside of all the nodes and we clicked on the uh, work area, but we didn't actually select anything. So then we can also call deselect nodes here. So that deselects everything. So we have a nice little system kind of set up here now. All right. So. The next thing we want to do is we actually want to keep track of the node that we are currently selected in our graph over here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is create a public uh, GT uh, node base. We're going to call this the selected node. All right, and so if we do actually hit one, or if we are over a particular node, then I want to actually fill the selected node with the node's i. All right. That way we can always get to it because if you remember in our node base we're storing a reference to our node graph all right and so we can always check now to see if the node if the selected node property inside of the node graph is not null and then for something like the property view if if that selected node isn't no node excuse me isn't null then we can show the properties for that selected node so it's a good way to retain information as the user is working through their graph all right all right, so I'm going to get rid of this debug log. 
And I'm also going to make sure that I set the selected node to null right off the bat, right? Because we want to clear everything out and then check and then check. And that way null or selected node will still be null if we didn't actually set a node. So we're taking care of a lot of information and managing our nodes um, uh, with quite a little, just a small amount of code. So that's good for us. So we also want to uh, set nodes i <coughs> to is selected. All right, that equals true. <coughs> All righty. Perfect. So that basically takes care of um, managing our nodes uh, all together. So we're coming in here, and we're we're telling we're first deselecting all the nodes, creating a couple of uh, variables here uh, to make sure that we store the information about what we just did. Come in here, and if we actually found a node, we set the node to selected, and we set the selected node on the graph, and we set this flag. And then we just make sure that we deselected all the nodes if we didn't, in fact, set this particular flag. So hopefully that all makes sense to you. Now we can go check that out. And um, we can actually watch this working if we actually go into our project directory here. And let's click on one of the nodes in here. So what we can do is we can go until we select it. And you can see that the is selected flag is actually triggering. It's perfect. So if I select this node and then select this node, there we go. So now we have a nice selection system happening. So the next thing that we need to do is get rid of this problem where we're moving things around. So that's an easy fix. We'll come into our node base where we're actually processing the uh, node movement. And what we're going to do is we're going to say, um, first just check to see if is selected. Then we can do all of this other stuff. But if it's not, we're not going to worry about anything. So we're just going to escape out of it completely. All right, so that should take care of that problem. Nice and easy. Oops, there we go. Perfect. So now we don't actually do it. But now we have another issue where if we move the mouse too fast, we actually lose um, track of it. All right. So we need to take care of that issue um, in particular, so that way we always are holding on to that particular node. All right, and so what I really want to do is um, try to figure out how to take care of that inside of this particular event um, method right here. So currently what we're doing is we're, we're making sure that we're selected. So if we are selected and the mouse is inside of the current view rect and we are doing a um, event type drag, and that's good. And that's the thing that we don't want to do. We don't want to test to see if um, we are over the node still, because we want to have control over it because we selected it already. So that just kind of cleans up our code already. So we're using this uh, Boolean flag right here to actually determine whether or not the node can be dragged, and not whether or not the mouse is inside of this node's rectangle. So now we actually have full control and we don't, we don't ever lose our node as we're moving it around until we mouse up. So that's good. We got everything working out perfectly. All right. So now it's really starting to feel like a real node editor. All right. So the last thing I want to do um, in this lesson is actually uh, create the, um, the node selected GUI style. So we're going to go in our GUI skin over here. All righty. And let's actually populate out this particular style. So we're going to create a different um, look for these guys. So I'm going to jump back into um, Photoshop here. And um, I'm going to get rid of that guy there. And what I want to do is um, edit some of these, uh, these properties here. And so let me actually grab this guy here and Well, let me actually redraw it here. Hold on a second. Oh, all right. <clears throat> so if I were to use the pen tool like so, there we go. There we go. All right. So I want to keep the same background, but I'm just going to change the um, actual um, outline color. That way, just it's a nice subtle indication um, 
to uh, showing that this particular node is selected. So that's going to be our um, selected state. So I'm just going to copy this off. All right, and I'm going to edit this one so the background is just a little bit lighter. It's probably too light. So let's check that. It's probably a little too light for my tastes. All right, let's, let's see what that looks like. There we go. That works for me. So um, all I want to do is save these guys out. And I'm just going to put this guy over there. Save this out as our node selected normal. All right, we'll save that. And then I want to do our hover state for this. All right. We'll call this the hover state. Perfect. All right, so let's get our GUI skin set up over here inside of our uh, inside of Unity. All right, and let's also set our textures to the right type. Do a little bit of work over here, set that to true color. Alrighty, <clears throat> excuse me. And uh, now what I wanna do is actually go into my editor skins over here and um, I'm going to update, this is the node selected style, so I'm gonna give this the node selected normal and node selected hover and then node selected normal again. <clears throat> oh, and those guys went way off the screen. There we go. We'll probably have to take a look at that here pretty soon. All right, and so um, let's just check to make sure that our font is the same. So it's going to be 17, and yep, bold is good. <clears throat> Actually, let's make these normal. I'm going to set the. All right, that's much better. Set that to normal, and I also want to set my um, font colors. There we go. There we go. All right, so now what we need to do is we need to um, select, or we need to detect if the node is selected and then switch out its um, GUI style. So uh, what we can do, we can do that in the node base itself. So what we will do is we'll say if uh, is selected, and in this case we'll say not selected. So if we're not selected, <coughs> else we're going to draw a different type of box with that other style so we're going to do GUI dot box same one but we're just going to do node selected as the style so we're just swapping out styles and going back and forth back and forth basically all right there you go and you can see that we are now selecting nodes when they stick and we can click off nodes to do deselect everything and we are working perfectly. All right, so you notice that when we move this around a little bit, some of the nodes are actually getting updated. So, and that's just because if it's selected, sometimes the mouse itself is coming back into the uh, work view over here. Uh, so uh, what I need to do is I need to find some way to actually clear this out. And we also need to take care of this um, padding value. So I don't really like that jump. So if I come into padding, that's eight for the default, and we need to do eight. There we go. There we go. Much better. All right, so I will need to make sure that um, if we've grabbed the frame here, we're not going to move a node when the, the mouse is, because it's not updating appropriately. I mean, it's updating appropriately, but when I start moving the mouse around a lot, you can see that the mouse is actually entering into the work view over here. All right, and so what I want to do is just make sure that I'm not moving um, those guys when I'm doing that uh, particularly. So we'll save that for uh, the final lesson in this course uh, so that uh, we can get through uh, some of the other things. But now we have a proper node management system that uh, makes it possible to move just a single node. And um, we are making sure that we know which node is selected and which node is not selected. So we can always access the current selected node inside of nodes 
by using its parent graph reference variable right there. All right, so that is the conclusion of this lesson. Thanks so much.